Hi everyone, welcome to our Facebook Live. Um, my name is Katie Morgan, I am Manager of Marine Systems, and today we're coming to you live from our Biosphere 2 mangroves. Um, this system has been around since the original crew members were inside of Biosphere 2. These mangrove species, we have three species of mangroves. We have black mangroves, red mangroves, and white mangroves. These mangroves were brought in actually from the Everglades all the way over to Arizona in some trucks. Um, that was quite an adventure as we understand it. They actually uh, got stuck at the border of Arizona trying to get these plants in because customs didn't have mangroves on the list of species that could be let into Arizona. So they kind of got stuck there for a little while until they got the correct permits and permissions to bring them over here to buy us here too. And then they were quarantined, these, these mangroves were quarantined until the space was ready for them to be put in. And the unique thing about this biome is that not only were these trees brought in, but so was the water and the soil and the microbiome that comes along with that soil and water. So it's one of the most full biomes that we have out here. It, you know, it all came from one place right here in front of us here. And you can tell the difference between these trees. So right off over here are red mangroves. You can tell because they've got these more aerial roots. So these roots are higher off from that water's surface. And then over on the other side are our black mangroves. You can tell those roots are different. They look kind of like fingers emerging from the water there. So those are how you can identify the differences between those two species of trees. And like I said, we also have um, some white mangroves in here. Those white mangroves are on the other side of this marsh mangrove system. So you can't see them from the perspective that we're at, but they are, uh, there's a couple trees that are on that side. Now, when these trees were brought in, none of these trees were taller than five feet. So you can tell there's been quite a bit of growth in the 30 years of this system being here. Um, these trees have done really well in this system. Mangrove environments in general are incredibly resilient ecosystems. So the water that's surrounding us right now is what we call brackish water. So it's a combination of salt water and fresh water and its uh, salinity is quite a bit lower than the oceans, um, but it's kind of that middle ground between the fresh and the salt water. So these trees are actually living in salt water right now, which is a very unique thing. Not a lot of trees or plants in general can do that. So they're able to adapt to this salt water environment by actually pulling that water into their roots and they extract the salt on the back of their leaves. So they don't use that salt for any purpose. They actually just go ahead and get it out of their system and they're able to extract it on the back side of their leaves. Now originally, when this mangrove system was put together, the idea is that we would have a freshwater marsh that would connect to the saltwater marsh that then would connect to our ocean system. Now, this makes a lot of sense when you think about it because the oceans are connected to mangroves and the natural systems around the world. But when you think about the scale of Biosphere 2, our mangrove system scale to our ocean system scales are not different enough for that to work. But they didn't know that yet until they tried it. So they actually did connect these systems for a very short amount of time until they quickly realized that the nutrients in the mangroves was way too high to be putting into the ocean for it to be successful. So they, these systems are completely separate today. Our ocean and our mangroves do not have any interaction, but they did in the early 90s for a very short amount of time. Now there's a lot of research that has come out of this ecosystem here. There's been research looking at the differences between a system in a closed environment, like we are inside of Biosphere 2, compared to those trees that are out in the natural systems in the Everglades. They've looked at different things, including leaf litter. So how does leaf litter uh, decompose in this kind of system? Uh, you can see a lot of the leaf litter down below us here. So they looked at those decomposition rates in the leaves. Um, but they've also looked at uh, levels of insects and insects eating and destroying some of these plants. Now we have very little um, insect life in here that is negatively impacting these mangroves. So they've been able to do studies looking at 
how the mangroves in Florida are reacting, having stress reactions, and how that might affect the anatomy of the plant, um, versus our, our mangroves in here, which have very little insects that are destroying their system. We have a, a unique collaboration with Patrick Kangas from the University of Maryland. And he has actually, for many years, he's been involved with the project since day one. He helped actually design this system. Um, but he's been bringing out students from the University of Maryland to work with us here and has built an algae turf scrubber system. Now, algae turf scrubbers have been around for a long time. It's actually how we um, controlled the nutrients in the ocean initially in the first experiment. We've moved on to some more modern technology today. But algae turf systems are really, beneficial for areas that have high nutrient loading. So mangroves are a really great example of a system that has really high nutrients. And in order to kind of extract some of those high levels of nutrients to increase productivity, they're able to use these algae turf scrubbers to grow the algae and then you pull that algae off of it, kind of remove some of those excess nutrients to keep the system healthy. And then those algae that's being pulled is being looked at for things like biofuel and food, food sources. So there's a lot of innovative research going on looking at how to use mangrove systems and technology like these algae turf scrubbers um, to think about how we are better in the future. Now, a lot of people ask when we're in here, what kind of animals do you have in here? I think that's a common question we get throughout all of our biomes. Now, I mentioned that they brought in soil and water and the microbiome from Florida, and that is true. Um, along with those came our we have two species of fish in here, a killifish and a mosquito fish. The main fish that we have in here today is our killifish. We don't see many of those mosquito fish in here anymore, um, but we do have those swimming throughout. But we don't have a lot of the other traditional animals that you might see in mangroves, like uh, fiddler crabs or sponges, um, or any kind of like a lot of juvenile animals. So mangroves are around the world very beneficial for uh, a lot of our juvenile marine animals. Um, a lot of fish and invertebrates actually go and lay their eggs amongst these roots. You can see how protected these roots may be um, if they are, those animals are coming in and burrowing in, laying those eggs. It allows a protective area for these animals until they are big enough and strong enough to go back out into the natural systems. Now mangroves also play um, a couple other really key roles around our world today. Um, you can tell these root structures are all up in this soil, so they actually are really great at preventing erosion. So having these complex root structures keeps all that soil in place. And if you think about it, where do you find mangroves? Well, you find them along our shorelines. And so they're really important for when we get big storms, hurricanes, uh, they keep our shores intact. Now, this has been an issue as we think about developing our our coastlines. I mean, most people, when they go on vacation, they have an option to stay right on the beach or two miles away from the beach. They're most likely going to want to stay right on the beach, at least I would. Um, so a lot of our mangrove systems have been destroyed because of that, because of development. And we've really been able to put in protective measures to make sure that no longer happens. Because not only do these mangroves protect our land, keep it from erosion, and protect those baby marine animals. They also are really great filters for our ocean. So these roots take up tons of excess nutrients, whether it's from pollution um, or just excess things that are coming from the ocean and filter all those things out so that the oceans are cleaner and our mangroves are cleaner. So there's so many important things that these mangroves do. And we're lucky to have a system like this inside of Biosphere 2 that we can continue to use for research and compare a system that's been under glass for almost 30 years uh, versus our natural systems, which are looking quite a bit different today. So it's a really unique research opportunity for us today. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was a pleasure to bring you into the mangroves today. Um, I do want to give a shout out. We are going to be doing a virtual Earth Day event. Uh, Earth Day is coming up on April 22nd. So keep your eyes peeled. We're gonna be posting some information about that early next week. So we hope that you're able to join us for that. And we'll see you live from Biosphere 2 next week.